It's Sunday, May 1st, and that's May Day all around the world. Except in Hawaii where it's Lay Day, and that's L-E-I, not L-A-Y for those of you who think carnally. In any event, it's always been a tradition on May Day that it's the start of spring. And over the years, there have been like, uh, I don't know, they called it a hodgepodge of traditions. There were parties and sing-alongs and maypole dancing and parades and labor protests on the streets of many major capitals around the world. And I remember as a kid going to Union Square every May Day and marching in the parade. And I remember the police there on their horses keeping us under control. And we were never really riotous. The worst thing is we might get out of line and we might move into a side street or something. And they just kept us in Union Square. That's all they wanted to do. But you know, it means many different things to many different peoples. In fact, when May Day existed in America, The Puritans wanted to stop it. They cut down the neighborhood maypoles, and they canceled parades, and they condemned the the tradition of May Day as a stinking idol reviving feasts of the Roman goddess Flora. And they even canceled Christmas. And that's a weird thing for any religious group to do. But that's what the Puritans did in any event. But now, now it's still, basically, in my mind, it's still about workers' rights. The celebrations in Union Square go all the way back to the late 19th century, when May Day became a socialist movement, celebrating workers' rights and collective bargaining power. I never realized how far back May Day went until I started reading up upon it. And in Union Square, hundreds are still gathering every year to protest the ever-widening pay gap between the leaders of business and their workers. And when we look at that, we look at it now. The spread between management and the workers has become astronomical. And there ought to be a better way to share the profits. And so that's why unions, I think, are cropping up in places like Amazon and Starbucks, because the workers are not getting their fair share. There's got to be a better way for workers to get their fair share. And maybe it has to be based upon the profit margins. And maybe you shouldn't be paid a salary that's set. Maybe every worker should be willing, if they want, to take a chance every year that the company's going to be profitable. So if workers said, you can pay me X dollars every single week and I'm going to get a cut of the profits at the end of the year. But if we don't make any money, I'm I'm willing to take a cut. No worker in their right mind is going to do that. So in any event, you will have unions trying to get workers' rights. And what workers believe their rights are is much different than what management thinks their rights ought to be. So May Day has evolved from a ritual of spring, which I'm sure it's still a ritual of spring in many parts of the world. So now it's maybe mostly labor protests. May Day demonstrations are more predominant in the capital cities of Europe where workers' rights have long been fought and won by a variety of socialist movements. Some people in the world who talk about May Day as having a green side and a red side. And under the rainbow, we look for colorful things. And green is the relationship to the earth and what grows there. And that's how they started May Day. It was spring and everything was starting to grow. But the red is the relationship to other people and the blood that has been spilt there among them. And green, green is useful activity and red is useless toil. And green is the creation of desire and red is the class struggle that still exists. And I could add other things between red and green. 
that would be effectively representing what's going on in this country. But I don't want to get into that. So if we look at May Day, May Day represents both sides. And depending upon where you live, and what you see around you, and what you are willing to do for yourself and others, you can go to the appropriate situation during May Day. If you are prone to fighting for workers' rights and things like that, it's to go to. If you're just on the agricultural side, then maybe you're going to dance around a maypole or something. But May Day is a universal event, and in different parts of the world, it means different things to people. And I'm sure that in the 30s and 40s, workers took to the streets on May Day, and the unions flourished. And now, on this May Day, if you look at the unionization that exists in this country, it's nil. There are very few unions left in this country. We only have about 12% of the workforce is unionized now. And how did that happen? I don't know how it happened, but it did happen. And most of the people who belong to unions end up being government employees. Most of the government employees have unions. Unionization in the private industry is way, way, way down. And maybe that's because workers were getting decent salaries and everything. Maybe it was because the unions were big business also, and they were collecting money and dues and everything, and maybe they didn't do enough for people who belong to those unions. It provided benefits, but you didn't get them for nothing. When you belong to a union, you paid something called union dues. And so May Day is a mixed bag. It could be a great holiday if you're looking toward the future end. Everything is going to be bright and sunny and spring is coming and summer is coming and everything's going to grow and be plentiful. Or it can be a day representing misery because we have to fight for more rights. Think about that. In the history of May Day from the Romans on upwards, there has always been a split, a division of the way people think about the future and the present and what they want out of life. So I will leave you with that. Today is an interesting holiday, and it's not really a holiday in many places. So have a great day, and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.